If you have your Bible, I know it is the tradition at this house, but it is for me everywhere I go to preach. Would you turn to the Gospel of John chapter 6? I'm going to be reading out of the message translation. That's what I read when I was in rehab, and it's continued to uh, give me the insight that I've needed. And if you, when you're there, would you please stand as I read? I'm going to read to the uh, 13th verse, and then I'll continue on later. Starting in the first verse, it said, After this, Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. Some call it Tiberias. A huge crowd followed him, attracted by the miracles they had seen him do among the sick. When he got to the other side, he climbed a hill and sat down, surrounded by his disciples. It was nearly time for the Feast of Passover, kept annually by the Jews. When Jesus looked out and saw that a large crowd had arrived, he said to Philip, where can we buy bread to feed these people? He said this to stretch Philip's faith, but he already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 silver pieces wouldn't be enough to buy bread for each person to get a piece. One of the disciples, it was Andrew, brother to Simon Peter said, there's a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But that's a drop in the bucket for a crowd like this. Jesus said, make the people sit down. There was a nice carpet of green grass in this place. They sat down and about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread and having given thanks, gave it to those who were seated. He did the same with the fish. All ate as much as they wanted. When the people had eaten their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. They went to work and filled 12 large baskets with leftovers from the five barley loaves. If you're taking notes tonight, I'm preaching from the subject title, Don't Miss the Boat. Don't miss the boat. Father, as I stand in this place, God, I pray that as your presence has already been moving, God, that there would be just one soul in this place, God. If one, the, one's just enough to get the download and revelation from the throne room of grace, God. I pray now, Holy Spirit, that you would just begin to move in, 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 a, in an unusual way like you've been moving all night, God. Allow this place to be illuminated with your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Christian, I want you to keep playing. When I came to ORU in January of last year, I knew that I was called to preach the gospel. And I knew that I had a calling on my life to see people set free from drugs and alcohol. That was what God had delivered me out of. And I often thought, I don't want to miss the mark of what God wants to do in my life. And when I was in New Jersey and I, 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 I got out of rehab, I, was, I wanted to preach and I wanted to share. And God started opening doors and moving mountains for me and miracles and signs and wonders. And so I applied to Hillsong College in Sydney, Australia. God accepted but it was $30,000 that I didn't have because I had lost everything. I had lost it all. I'm painting the picture. I just want you to stay with me. And I, I didn't want to miss the mark because I had missed the mark in my addiction. That, that's all I knew was failing and messing up. I, I didn't want to do that again this time around. But when you're marked and chosen... He'll bring you to exactly where you need to be. And so I came to ORU thinking I didn't have a lot, and I didn't. But what I had to offer was my willingness to say yes to the call. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't miss the boat. I'm painting the picture. Stay with me. Now, we read this part of Scripture, and we always talk about the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, and that's powerful. 
But I want to look at the perspective of the young boy. It said, there's a little boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But that's a drop in the bucket for a crowd like this. So scripture doesn't say it. But could you imagine the conversation that Andrew had to have with this young boy? See, it doesn't say that his parents brought him there. It doesn't even say how he got there. All it says is he was there. And as I sat and read this, I thought, well, what if these were the two last fish and five loaves of bread that were going to feed his family for the next few days? I thought about that. What if it was from a meal from the previous night? that he had brought and had in his basket because he was coming and that was all he would have to eat. There was no quick trips. Come on. There was no Whataburger. And I love Whataburger. And I'm going somewhere. And so this conversation, hey, young man, I see you got a basket. What do you got in it? And um, I traveled away and this is all I got. I came to see Jesus who performs these miracles. So why are you talking to me? I, I'm just a young boy. But God had already known that this young man, see, he was going to witness the miracle. Oh, but he didn't realize that he was about to be a part of the miracle. Oh, he might only had two fish. He might only had five loaves. And then it says, huh, not even 200 pieces of silver would pay for what it's going to cost to feed all these people. So I'm not talking about multiplying money here. I'm talking about something that I have in my house. I'm not talking about giving thousands of dollars to people. I'm talking about you see your brother and sister struggling. Are you willing to say, I can't take you to Ruth Chris, but you can come over and I'll make some fried chicken and mac and cheese and we can have some fellowship. Come on, I'm just painting the picture. I'm not even at my point yet. And so the young boy says, well, if you need it, I guess, I guess you can have it. Stop looking at what looks small as something that God can't take and multiply. See, it says 5,000 men, but historians say there could have been up to 15,000 with women and children. So Andrew goes back with this basket and, yeah, Jesus, here we go. All right, we'll tell him to sit down. I couldn't imagine what the young boy was thinking. And then it says, make the people sit down. There was a nice carpet of green grass in this place. They sat down and they all ate. Then Jesus took the bread and having given thanks, gave it to those who were seated. So they ate. But I want you to catch this. It then says, he says, gather the leftovers so nothing is wasted. You came hungry, not knowing how you were going to eat. And he's blessed you so much that what went from nothing went from leftovers. Does anybody serve a leftover God? 
Does anybody in here know that God can take two fish and five loaves? He, you, you might think, I don't know how I'm going to eat tonight, but I came in here with nothing, but I'm about to have leftovers for a meal tomorrow. I might have been addicted to drugs. I might have been addicted to alcohol, but I got leftovers. I'm about to go into the place that God has called me to be. I might not have everything that I want, but I got everything that I need. Don't miss the boat. And so all this is going on. They're gathering the fish, the leftover bread. And the people started making commotion. I said earlier, I don't believe in idling, man, but I do believe in honoring. But what went from a miracle went to, I need you to rescue our people. Not as a savior, but as a king. They began idling Christ the man, not Christ the God. That's a dangerous place to be in. And guess what he did? He went off. Now I said you need to get some fellowship, and I believe that. But there's certain times... When the noise of life and all the tickering going on in our minds. We're, 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 see, I told you to get some fellowship and that's good fellowship. But there's another kind of fellowship where you're around the wrong people who are whispering in your ear that, that you need to get away from by yourself. You have to. I came to ORU by myself. I had nothing. Zero. The clothes on my back. But I knew that God would take me if I continued to say yes. And so he went off. He went off in the distance. And the disciples, where is he? Where is he? Where is Jesus? And by the time night came, they're looking and can't find him. That he says, they say, well, we're just going to go back to Capernaum where we came from. Maybe he'll end up there. We don't know. So they get in the boat and they go. I couldn't imagine being the other people who were witnessing that miracle, seeing Jesus walk off, leaving his disciples by themselves. I wonder what that made him look like for a moment. You ever feel like you haven't, couldn't hear or see God? Like it was kind of blacked out for a moment? But it was it's because of a purpose he's just not being silent sometimes for no reason because I can't the boat I can't miss if there's a lot of noise going around and I haven't even talked about the boat other than they got in the boat and went back to Capernaum but the storm was raging in the sea God will perform a miracle and then sometimes a storm follows. Oh, I got delivered but everybody in my family turned their back on me because I'm serving, I'm serving Christ. How come I started my business and I'm not getting any sales? I don't preach for emotion. I, I, I preach that there may be a miracle on the other side. I'm here to challenge somebody tonight. And as this storm was raging, everybody, hold on. It's getting crazy. 
We just saw God move. But where's he at? Wait. I thought he had just abandoned me. I, I, I thought he had just left me. But I'm looking out. Who, who is that? Walking on water. Who is that? Uh, yo, you seeing this? I've done a lot of drugs in my life. And I'm telling you, if I was sitting in there, I would have been going crazy. Because how could this man that I just seen on land come and start walking through the storm of what I'm going through? How could that be? How could that be? He just said, it's me. It's just me. I never left you. You couldn't see me. But I was still with you. I know the storm was raging. But, but I was right there. But there's another thing that happens. You go through the storm, but your pride comes along. You weren't with me then. I don't need you now. Uh Uh-oh. Are we using God as a vending machine? Just keeping it real. And so he gets in the boat and they go to Capernaum. And this is where the substance of my message is going to pick up. Is it starting in verse 22? It says, The next day the crowd was left behind, realized there, that there had only been one boat, and that Jesus had not gotten into it with his disciples. Stay with me. They had seen them go off without him. By now, boats from Tiberias had pulled up near where they had eaten the bread, blessed by the master. This next part, highlight. So when the crowd realized he was gone and wasn't coming back, they piled into the Tiberias boats and headed for Capernaum looking for Jesus. Now pause. I said, don't miss the boat. I'm not talking about the boat that the disciples and Jesus got on. I'm talking about these boats, Jesus, that these people got into. These people spent the night where this miracle had been performed. Some of these people were in such reverence to what had just happened that they they, they couldn't even go back home. Maybe if I sit here, he'll bless me again. Maybe if I stay in this same place, he'll move again. It's going to drop on you in a second when I say don't miss the boat. I'm going to read again. They piled into the Tiberius boats and headed for Capernaum, highlight, looking for Jesus. There was no Google Maps. There was no GPS. Oh, Jesus. All these people knew was to get in the boat. That's all they knew what to do. And where they were going, they didn't even know at first if it would be the place where Jesus was. But they were willing to take the chance. When you know God and you've experienced his wonder working, miracle working power 
it doesn't matter to you if you got to jump in the boat to get to the next place. See, 3434 was a miracle, Pastor. But there were other boats that were coming up to the dock that you had to step into and you weren't sure how it was going to happen. Don't miss your boat. Don't miss the other thing that God has for you. You can't miss it. You're saying, well, what does this have to do with this miracle? I'm going to tell you what it has to do with. It has everything to do with that they saw the miracle and it doesn't even explain that Jesus said really why he was doing it. He just broke bread and said, I'm thankful, Lord. I almost titled this sermon, There is More. Because he'll give us a piece of the miracle. And then he'll want to see if you'll get in your boat. If, if you'll find a way to come seek after him. See, see, the boat symbolizes your next move. You were in the green pasture where it was looking good. But I'm here to tell you something. If you get in that boat, you're on your way to Capernaum where God's getting ready to reveal something even greater. Something even greater than you ever seen before. Well, you said that miracle was amazing and it was. But Jesus wanted to see if they would come follow him so that he would be able to finish the miracle. 205 South Sheridan is just a glimpse of the miracle. See, y'all don't see it, but I see vision. I told Pastor in January at Chapel at ORU, I said, Pastor, this may sound crazy, but I know you're in 3434, but God told me y'all getting ready to move. You're getting ready to move. Oh, that's too much. We're good here. We're comfortable here. You're, you're, you're staying in a place that's stagnant. You're comfortable in the ordinary. See, when you see the boat... Is that a hole in the boat? Oh, water might get in. Wait, that boat's small. I can't, my, I can't bring everybody with me. See, sometimes the boat requires you to get in by yourself first. To pioneer the way for everybody else that's getting ready to come with you. I might be white, but I got soul somewhere deep inside of me to preach the good news of Jesus. I've been delivered. I've been set free. He's made a way out of no way. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, take five seconds and just thank him that I'm getting ready to step into the boat. I'm getting ready to step into another promise. I'm getting ready to move into all God has for me. Come on, five more seconds. Come on, I know he made a way. Come on, that boat might look small. You better get in it. Come on, you got to get in it. I know there might be holes in it, but he's going to patch them up. You're going to step in it. Get in that boat. I don't care if the boat took off. Jump in that water. Swim to the boat. Get in that boat. So when they found him back across the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, you've come looking for me, not because you saw God in my actions, but because I fed you, filled your stomachs, 
and it was for free. Check your motive. Are you serving God to get the Rolls Royce? Oops. I'm not saying that God can't bless that. But what's your motive? Jesus came to this place. Capernaum. And these people knew that if I get to Jesus, he'll give me some sort of revelation and understanding of what just happened. I thank God that I took the chance to get in the boat. Even as the storms raged, I was still thankful that I got in the boat. I think of an entertainer who I love, who used to sleep in his car, travel all over just to perform little plays so he might get recognized. But he knew if he got in the boat fully, God would be able to perform. And God would be able to make a way. This man has cultivated and pioneered entertainment industries for the African American community all because he was willing to step into his boat. He said, I want to rent a studio in Hollywood. Oh, we don't do that for you. So I'm going to go to Atlanta, and I'm going to buy an old military base, and I'm going to make that my studio. And I'll produce, and I'll direct, and I'll make my movies all from this place. God blessed this man because he stepped in the boat but he was willing to persevere because he knew as a believer in Christ that there was more for him if he stepped in that boat. Some of you all might know him. His name is Tyler Perry. Seventeen seventy six in the Delaware River, frozen. Ice. There was a general who said, We gotta sneak up on our enemy. I know it's gonna hurt some of my men by doing this, but I'm gonna be strategic. We'll get in the boats and we'll cross. I'm not sure if we'll all make it. General George Washington stepped into his boat. I want this to be a message that you will allow God to shift and transform your thinking to know that if I step into the boat, I'm at risk, I'm in jeopardy, I might even be alone. One of my favorite preachers in the sermon that changed my life, he said it had to happen. Pastor Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church, it had to happen. I had to come to ORU by myself. My dad passed away four years ago. My brother passed away 15 years ago. It all had to happen. It was painful. And it's still painful. But I had to get in my boat. 
Because if I didn't get in my boat, I would wallow in sorrow and never be the man that God wanted me to be. Getting in your boat will cost you something. It'll cost you friends. It'll cost you family. It might cost you being uncomfortable for a season. But the promise is this. Is that if you get in the boat, you have to know whatever way the winds and the rain and the storms rage against you. You have to know, woman of God, that he will bring you to the place called Capernaum. He'll bring you. It doesn't look like it yet. The boat might be wooden. It might be painful. You see this passion, but you don't know the nights that I've cried myself to sleep. Because I had to step into my boat. I prayed a put, I, I paid a price to stand in this pulpit. I had to die to myself. I'm not this theological scholar, but what I am is someone who's been through life on life's terms and can talk with you and not down to you. Every message that I preach is something that's applied to me in my life. I was in Chicago in August preaching. I preached pain in the process. Little did I know this whole year at ORU, wow, was there going to be pain in the process? God loves you so much. I don't know who this is for. His love is reckless. His love will break down every barrier, every wall. He'll find you. And he'll get you to the boat. He'll make sure that he gets you. To come here, why he performed the miracle. Listen to this. Verse 27, John 6. Don't waste your energy striving for perishable food like that. Work for the food that sticks with you. Food that nourishes your lasting life. Food the Son of Man provides. He and what he does are guaranteed by God the Father to last. To that they said, well... What do we do then to get in on God's works? You don't have to act in front of God. He knows where you're at. He knows when you're all by yourself in your room and the lies and the thoughts start raging. And you're not sure what to do, but you end up slipping in some kind of area. He sees all that. He looks past that. He wants to know, where's your heart at? Are you willing to step in the boat for me? Are you willing to get in the water for me? God's love came and rescued me down. He came down and rescued me. At America's Keswick in Whiting, New Jersey, I went into rehab with nothing. It was that love that came down and said, get in the boat. It was that love that said, I know you lost it all. But it, it, it was what was needed. I have something more for you. I know your dad's gone. I know you're in pain. But stay in the boat. Don't get out. 
Some of you in here have experienced miracle after miracle after miracle. But you're not willing to go to the next place that God has for you. He'll keep blessing you in that same spot. And I'm not talking about money. Everybody always wants to talk about money. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about your health. Your children serving Christ. Clothes on your back. Food in your belly. You might not even have a car, but at least you got a bike. You might not have the Rolex, but at least you got the Swiss. I, I, I don't want to miss what God has for me. But I got to step in the boat. I have to. Jesus said, throw your lot with the one that God has sent. That kind of commitment that gets you in on God's works. This translation says they waffled. Why don't you give us a clue about who you are? The same people that witnessed this miracle are now the same people questioning, are you really God? Are you really who you say you are? I've fallen into that. Where am I going to live? How am I going to provide for myself? I've questioned God even after he's blessed me time and time again. But he shows up every single time. He has to. It's in his nature. It's in his being. There's somebody in this room. I know this because when I was sitting at the praying hands all this week, download after download for this message kept coming to me. I've read this passage a hundred times, but he knew that it was time to be released at this place at this time. They then said, when we see what's up, we'll commit ourselves. But I thought you just saw him perform a miracle. We are so stubborn and so big-headed sometimes that we are not willing to count up the cost for what it will take for us to go to that next place. You know what a lot of us will do? Self-sabotage. Here's the boat. Mm -mm. I'm not good enough. My past haunts me. My addiction haunts me. My alcoholism, it, it attacks me. My gambling addiction, it attacks me. I'm preaching this tonight that you go and leave here and go on a full out hunt and search for you to get in the boat. And as the great Bishop T.D. Jakes says that you'll receive a download from heaven. That there will be such a revelation of his goodness like you've never experienced once you get in the boat. Don't question who he is. He's performed the miracle for you. Let him be God and God alone. He then said, they said, show us what you can do. Moses, Moses fed our ancestors with bread in the desert. It says so in the scriptures. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus responded, The real significance of that scripture is not that Moses gave you bread from heaven, but that my Father is right now offering you bread from heaven. The real bread. The bread of God came down out of heaven 
and is giving life to the world. They jumped at that. Master, give us this bread now and forever. See, he already knew that they were going to come to him. So he had to show them before they got to him what the miracle was. They thought he was breaking the bread because they were hungry. He was breaking the bread to prove to them that I know your need, I know your pain, I'm right there with you, and I will give you exactly what is needed for you to be sustained in this season. He literally used the thing that he blessed them with. That when they began to challenge him, he fought back with what he did for them. Listen to this. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. The person who aligns with me hungers no more. The person who fully comes to me with their addiction will fight no more. The person who gives me their heart. There might be some pain, but you're not going to struggle like you used to. Because now you'll be able to tap into something so much more powerful than you've ever experienced. There's going to be pain and there's going to be tribulations. But be rest assured in knowing this. That he is the bread of life. And you can come and eat whenever you want. Whenever you're ready. But you got to get in the boat. You have to. There's more. I told you this explicitly. Because even though you have seen me in action, you don't really believe me. Every person the Father gives me eventually comes running to me. You may be in here and you may be thinking about going back to your old life and that's all right. But I'm going to ruin that parade of yours and say you can run, you can't hide. He'll bring you back time and time again to the dock to get in the boat every time he's just that good but listen to this as I close and once that person is with me I hold on and don't let go I'm not he's not letting go he's not letting go of one of his kids You might have not had a mom or dad. But he's not letting go of you. He's not. He said, I came down from heaven. Not to follow my own whim. But to accomplish the will of the one who sent me. Don't miss your boat. If there's anybody in here that knows that they need to step into that boat and to challenge themselves, you've seen God move, but you need Him to speak to you in a greater way with the full yes I want you to come down here I want you to come down here and I want you to examine your life I want you to take inventory 
of what God has done and what he's going to continue to do. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you've hurt. I don't care what's going on around you. I want you to know this. That if you step in the boat and you allow God to take you from the promise to the unknown, that He'll be able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ever think, dream, or imagine. 